This ability is so trash, just give the inquisitive rock two sight instead of whatever this is. So recently, I had such a wonderful in-depth discussion with one of the commenters in my previous Inquisitive Rock video, all without hurling a single insult at each other, which can be quite a rare thing on the internet unfortunately, but still, pleasant nonetheless. We talked a lot about the Inquisitive Rock. I'm gonna leave a link down below so you can access that video and check the conversation out for yourself. We came to an agreement that the mechanic of the Inquisitive Rock 13 level feature, an erring eye, doesn't fully deliver on the flavor it promised. That's because when when we take a quick glance at an erring eye, we think, aha, uh -huh, detect illusion, detect invisibility, detect shape changes, nice. But in actual gameplay, because its range is rather short and it's limited to 3 to 5 times for an inquisitive rock on average before they need to go to bed for 8 hours straight. So we don't really know when we should use this ability. Should we save it for later or should we use it now? As a result, we just use it when we already suspect an illusion or a shape changer is nearby. And when we do use it, we just get a crappy confirmation from our DM. Yep, there's something fishy nearby. Nothing more. We gain absolutely zero, none, nada inside on the matter or what is trying to deceive us. How many things are trying to deceive us? Where they are? Are they actually relevant for our purpose or just a random noble having an illusory enhanced dress? I know. The premise of this ability is absolutely flavorful. A paranormal investigator happens to have an eerie sense that something is off and start looking suspiciously at everyone and everything nearby. Ah, oh, such a juicy narrative moment. So why does an erring eye not work like in the books or movies? I gave this some investigation and realized that with the way that this ability is written, it falls into a weird state in between two different but related things that a detective do. First, passively and vaguely suspecting things. This is feeling something is wrong like we've discussed about before. Then second, Focus energy to actively and thoroughly investigating things, confirming that suspicion. The unerring eye ability, as written, provides the vague information benefit that we should get passively, but it requires an activation, which we don't know when we should use. Okay, that clears things up. So now we can see that we have two simple directions to fix this ability. One, to shift the ability entirely to the passive side, making the ability a passive. Or two, shifting it entirely to the active side, giving more concrete information whenever we activate it. Let's try the passive direction. A quick trip around the internet and we'll find that some people already tried to fix this ability by turning it into a passive always on. But that also has problems. Because if it's a passive ability, then the inquisitive rock can just walk around the dungeon, walk around the tavern, and discover illusions or shape changes wherever they go immediately. Oh, the ability doesn't allow me to know the exact location of the effect? Yeah, let me just do a silly dance of in, out, in, out, back and forth, back and forth of my 30 feet range so it can pinpoint exactly where that is. Like, hey DM, if I take one step to the left so that person is no longer within 30 feet of me, do I still sense that something is wrong? Hmm, okay, how about I take one step back to the right, do I sense it again now? Yeah? Hey guys, that person right there, yep. That just straight up removed one espionage tool from the DM toolbox. The DM now has one less narrative device to create cool story for the players. And I don't think it's that fun for the inquisitive rock player either. Because if a player wants to play an investigative or detective archetype character in a fantasy world, they want to discover things or investigate things, not just have the answer handed right to them on a silver platter. The passive suspicion works better in a movie. Because when a movie detective senses that something is wrong, it is convenient for the plot. It is a plot device that a storyteller carefully plans. Similarly in D&D, it works much better when the DM carefully plans out when the party picks up that something is off, either through subtle hint or conflicting dialogue or just straight out saying, hey, your character feels that something is off from that conversation with that person. Maybe the DM would give this hint not when the party first encountered the shapeshifter, but the second time or the third time instead, when the plot has sufficiently thickened and the story has become interesting. So with that said, I decided to fix this ability by shifting it entirely to the active side. The ability now reads, Unerring Eye. Beginning at 13th level, your senses are almost impossible to foil. You can give yourself two sight out to a range of 30 feet until the start of your next turn, no action required. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, medium number of ones, and you gain all expanded uses when you finish a long rest. Still keep it limited in use, but buff the effect to two sight instead of whatever this is. Is this too strong? I don't think so. 
Any full spellcaster in the game except druids can access a spell Choose Seeing from level 11. And at level 13, they can cast a spell twice per day, giving them Choose Sight for 120 feet range and lasts for an entire hour. They can also use that spell on another person, not necessarily themselves. Compare that to the 13th level ability of a rock subclass solely dedicated to unveiling things. That ability gives them a 30 feet range version of Choose Seeing for one round, three to five times per day. I see zero problem with this. If anything, this shows how weak the original Unerring Eye was. Okay, if you are perceptive, maybe you are an in real life inquisitive rock yourself, you may notice that this ability no longer requires an action to activate. Good eye, Captain. The reason is, when we use this ability outside of combat, either in a social setting or in a dungeon crawl, then we don't really care about the action cost anyway. Action, bonus action, or no action to activate. Same thing outside of combat, only when an ability requires at least 1 minute to activate, then it starts to matter outside of combat. Then why no action activate then, if it makes no difference at all? My goals are beyond your understanding. I mean, I do have a secondary goal when reworking this ability. I want to solve a glaring problem for the original Inquisitive Rogue, which I think is a massive oversight from Wizard of the Coast. The problem is, they are good at spotting stealthy creatures, but they are not better than any other rocks at dealing with invisible creatures. Stealthy monsters, invisible monsters, all on the same page in my book. A 30 feet true side provides a way for the Inquisitive Rogue to deal of invisible creatures in combat. Now even though it doesn't take an action to use, it's still not free. Its usage is limited by our wisdom modifier. Using an erring eye in combat means we have less use of it in a social setting or in a dungeon crawl, meaning it's a trade-off between combat power and our combat utilities. Also, it requires the inquisitive rock to run into the thick of combat due to the ability's short range, 30 feet. Usually, a rock has tactical advantage from staying at range using a ranged weapon. But at least, this new ability provides the inquisitive rock a chance to deal with invisibility creatures now. They have until the start of their next turn to be exact. Maybe. Perhaps. I don't know. Attack it and deal a bazillion damage to it, like rocks always do. That will force that creature to make a concentration saving throw for their invisibility. Maybe it would use that useless insightful fighting feature that requires sight on that invisible creature to assert DOMINANCE. Oh goody, you're still here. Now check out how I buffed that useless insightful fighting feature in my previous Inquisitive Rock video.